Welcome back to Tutorial Tidbits and welcome to my channel. I'm Elizabeth St. Hilaire and this week I have something really fun for you to mess around with, play with, experiment with, and enjoy the process of. It is more fun with Posca paint pens on the gel plate. So I have done this before and it was really well received. So I've got another project for you. So if you got a few minutes, let's go check it out. Welcome to the studio. So I've got some brand new Posca markers and they're the big, huge chisel tip, the PC8K. I've got some other sizes too, but I'm really excited about these right now. And the uh, cool thing about them is that I've got them in all these great colors for florals because I've got a fun floral project for us today with Posca markers on the gel plate. But the bad news um, or the frustrating news about these Posca markers is that somebody decided to or somebody over there decided that it was a good idea at Posca to individually wrap every one of these markers in plastic. And it's not the kind of plastic that has the, the perforated line going down, no. It's the kind of plastic that goes over the bottom and the top and how the heck are we gonna get these unwrapped? I'll tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna use the X-Acto blade. We're just gonna cut and try and keep our fingers out of the way and split that off. That's gonna be the easiest way Okay, so the first thing you need to do to get your Posca markers ready is don't cut your fingers while you're doing this. The first one is always so much more easy. Okay, there we go. And then the second thing that you need to know is that the Posca paint pens have to be primed. You have to shake, 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 shake all the paint down like this. You have to just keep on shaking them. And then we have to get the paint to the tip. So I'll show you how to do that in a minute. If you are new to these markers, um, they come in all kinds of different points and tips and sizes. They come in bullet points, they come in fine points. Um, we're gonna use them on the plate and we're gonna uh, uh, utilize this um, brand new Georgia O'Keeffe collection uh, single calla lily mask and that's going to be our image that um, we're going to create some art with. So the um, thing you need to know is that we're going to be working with the ghost print. So and to get a real good ghost print I'm going to use some heavy body uh, paint by Golden. Normally I use fluid acrylics and I think you probably still could use fluid acrylics but this paint is a little bit thicker and may give us a bit of a better ghost print. Okay, so um, then something else that I may add at the end is one of, another one of my favorite products is the Stickles Glitter Gel. It's so much fun. It's got stars and it's got circles and it's got all kinds of great shapes in that container. So um, that's good stuff. I spread that with the palette knife. So let's get a piece of paper and see what we need to do to prime these markers. So first you're gonna shake them. And then you're gonna press down and try to get the paint to come to the tip. We could be here a while with this. So I would say that before you get excited about starting your project, make sure you take some time to unwrap and get your markers ready to go. Here we go. The paint's coming down there. So just depressing the tip and scrubbing a little bit and just until that tip is no longer white, but is covered in the blue. So you gotta get all that paint down into that tip. And this is a great tip, this chisel tip, for some wide marks. Okay, so that's pretty much down. And pretty much. Still needs a little bit. There we go. One down and one, two, three, four, five, six to go. Wow. Okay. So, it's true. 
you have to shake these like crazy and the prep time is forever between unwrapping the wrappers on every single one of them and shaking them all down to get the paint and the tip this is when i feel like i need an intern an assistant somebody some help okay so i finally got them all primed and shaken down and like i said these are new for me and they are all that chisel tip of the pc8k so um they have a real cool chisel tip and i'm gonna grab my um my box of other markers my other posca pens and you can see that there are plenty of other um, colors and tips in here. Like, for example, here's a PC5M, and that's a bullet point that's smaller. Um, and then they go all the way down to, like, uh, even a smaller point. This is a PC3ML, and that's going to give you a, um, that's a, a glitter pen. Um, so we got a lot of options in here and a lot of different points. Let's see. This is a bullet point about the same size, almost the same size as the chisel point. This is a seven, the chisel points an eight, but you can see, so there's lots of different tips and options and sizes, and we're just going to mess around with a few of those. Um, but I wanted to, um, especially put out some colors that I think I would use for this calla lily. So let's see. Um, we got some purple, we got some lilac, we got another hot pink, here's sort of a salmon peachy color, that's probably good, here's another pale yellow, pale pink, more colors than we need, right? Okay. Okay, so we got all those colors and we got all these new chisel points, which I did not have before. I've got my 9 by 12 gel plate here so that it'll fit the 9 by 12 uh, mask, you know, as closely as possible. And I am going to be working on some cardstock. I've got some 9 by 12 cut cardstock here, so it's exactly the same size as the plate and it's going to be the perfect size for the calla lily. And what I like about this cardstock is that it is smooth and sturdy surface and it is not going to stick to the plate and it will pull all the paint off and we don't have to worry about sticking no matter how dry it gets. This is a nice, rigid, durable cardstock and this will give us a nice um, piece of paper for our art. So I think that, you know, white is the expected color. So I was really interested in working on the brown craft or the black smooth and sturdy. So for the black smooth and sturdy, obviously everything that we do would have to be lighter colors. Um, so I think I'm going to experiment first with the brown craft, but I think the black would look fabulous with like the metallics and the whites and the bright colors. So that I would like to practice as well. But this is going to be the brown craft. Um, like I said, it's cardstock, so I'm not going to worry about it sticking to the plate. So the first thing that I'm going to do is create the ghost print. And you have to remember that when you print this, it's going to flip direction. So if you want it facing this direction to the right, then you have to print it to the left. If you want it to the left, then you have to print it to the right. Um, I'm feeling like I might like it that way. So that means I'm going to have to print it this way. So I decided I'm going to use the cobalt violet hue. I'm just going to put out a thin layer of that on the plate. And again, this is the 9 by 12 plate so that it fits the, the pre-cut card stock, which is available from Joggles, and the mask, which is also available from Joggles, um, exactly the right size so we're just going to roll out a thin layer of this lovely luxurious purple cobalt violet hue paint by golden and i'm using my six inch brayer to get a nice smooth application across the entire plate now i'm going to put the mask into the plate facing the opposite direction that what i want to see my finished piece so I've got to tip this a little bit, get that all the way in there. Okay, so I think that's good. So the first thing I'm going to do is use a couple sheets of paper 
just to take the paint out of the negative spaces because we're going to be working with the ghost print. So we want to make sure we apply really good pressure and we have good contact with the plate because we want to get all the paint out so that we're just working with the ghost print of this one calla lily mask. So you want to get your fingers down in between all the little fine laser cut detail areas. And if you see any paint still poking through, you're going to apply more pressure. Look at that. So I'm going to apply more pressure here. Oh, definitely in the middle, in the center of this. There we go. And in here. So we've got that. This is making a really good print. I see there's a few more spaces. So you're going to come in here with the clean part of the paper. If you see any paint kind of lingering in the small detail areas, it's really important that you get out as much of the paint off of the plate. We only want paint trapped under the mask to give us a good ghost print. So if you see purple or whatever color you're using, okay, I think that's good. That ought to do it. Okay, so now we're just going to lift this up to reveal that ghost print. So that's what we're working with. Now, the heavy body paint usually will leave a little bit more behind. Although this got kind of light in here, I think it's still going to be okay. So you might want to play with it. You could add a, th a slightly thicker layer of paint because some of it does stick to the back of the mask. So the back of the mask does remove some of the paint. So sometimes you might have to go a little heavier. And this is pretty light in here. So if, if that doesn't make you happy, uh, print it and try it again with a little heavier paint application. Um, I'm not going to worry about that because I can reinforce it with the marker. So before you ask me, what is the point of doing the Posca paint pens on the gel plate rather than directly on the paper? The effect that we're going to get here is going to be sort of, it's going to look like a stamp. When, when we pull the print, the markers are going to take on a different quality and they're going to look a little bit like stamped and a less like direct colored. So it's an indirect method that we're using and the markers are going to have a more unique kind of worn look that'll appear more like a stamp than if we just colored directly on the paper. So that's the idea that we're going for is um, the indirect printing method with the markers to give them a little bit more character, make them a little bit more painterly and a little less solid like um, like a marker. So, okay, so now we're gonna wait for this to dry and it should dry pretty quick. Yeah, it should dry pretty quick. And then in the meantime, I've got this purple Posca. So, um, and this is my bullet point and I can come in here and shore up some of the lines it's a different purple, which ought to make for make it interesting. So I can come in here and, or, you know, you could, while you're, you know, strengthening some of these lines, we could always um, use a totally different color. We're not limited to the purple. So, ooh, wow, that's solid. There's a little pink. Now, the other thing I want you to remember is when you are working this way, what you're going to see when we put the paper on to pull, the bottom layer is going to show on the top of this paper because when we press it, what's on top is actually going to be on the back. Does that make sense? So this layer is going to show first and all the coloring that we do with the Posca pen will be behind it. So um, the stuff on the bottom is going to be on the top when we pull the print. When we press and pull the print, we're gonna get what's down first is gonna show up on the top. You'll see that when I do it, but you wanna keep that in mind. So here's a smaller point, a much smaller point, if I wanted to come in here and make some fine line. This is the uh, PC3M. So that gives me an opportunity to get real fine line kind of right in with the fine lines of the laser print. I mean, the laser cut, the laser cut of the mask. 
So the laser cut gives us some really nice fine lines and detail. And so uh, uh, if you want it to be um, very uh, crisp and true to the mask, you can use a, a finer pen. I don't mind going outside the lines. Um, I don't mind um, switching up the colors. I think that's just more going to give us more visual interest. So this is a little bit thicker than the last one. This is, oh, that's in Japanese. I don't know what that means. Uh, 2.5 millimeters. So let's see. We got a little cross lines in here. Now at this point, if you want to add any embellishing, like I'm going to put some dots in here. If you want to embellish this drawing um, before you color it in, we're going to do that first. So well, I'll put some dots in here. And the bullet point is great for the dots. You know, the bullet point is really going to make good dots. And let's see, here's an, another purple. Ooh, that's a nice light kind of pastel flower color. So remember, even though I'm covering over the dark purple, that is my bottom layer. So it's what's going to come off first on the gel print. So we are still going to see that original ghost print. So when your uh, pen isn't running out, you just need to depress the tip and kind of get more paint to come down into the tip. There we go. So when it, if it stops working, you have to just prime it again. So I want to put some color in some of this. So I would say the first thing that I'm doing is adding some color to back up the lines of the ghost print. And this is a great color for that. This color, oh, it's in Japanese, so I can't even tell you. Isn't that awful? Um, they're not all like that. Somehow I got the ones that uh, I think w weren't made for export or something. Um, okay, so this is a white flower. So let's see if we can use this one. This is a super fine point though, but we could add some cross marks in here. If you want it to be realistic, the middle of that on the calla lily is yellow, but we can put yellow over the top of it. Let's see. Um, if you wanted to be realistic, you could make the reinforce these stem lines with shades of green, which we can still add that to it. Because now in this part, once that dries, we can come in and add color. So we're just gonna color it in, make some dot patterns on it, kind of add your own take on this design of mine. So there's some light green. Now the key with these markers, make sure you get the lids on until they click. That's important. You don't want them to dry out. Okay, so here's some teal green. Let's add that in here. So I really enjoy doing this because if you just want, you know, some time to zone out and enjoy the process, this is a really nice way to do it because I've taken the fear out of drawing for you by providing this great, fun, bold drawing to color in. So let's see, speaking of bold, let's see how this big chisel tip, because these are what I was really interested in this time. Let's see how that fills in here. So we can put it on its point to get a thin line, and then we can turn it to its side to get a thicker line. 
And I love that because we can really color in some big areas rather quickly with this chisel tip. So there's the white there. And I think I'm also gonna bring that in here. So that gives us some white, which is the expected color of this calla lily. So I do want to leave some space for the brown craft paper and right in here I left a space between the colored lines and that's something I could explore more. So instead of having the colors touch each other, if you leave a bit of open space, you're going to get the brown craft color showing through, which would be, which could be kind of cool. So the brown craft will be all on the outside, but you could leave some space between colored areas on the inside to create lines of brown craft within the flower, which I think would be kind of a neat look. So along here, I didn't shore up the line, and I think that's going to be fine because some areas of the line being light is okay too. So the next step is to let this all dry, and then I'm going to pull it with matte medium because I don't want to pull it with a paint color. I need to put a, a solution of um, paint or medium over this to, to moisten the gel plate to cause it to release the pens so that it'll print. But I don't want to use a color because I really wanted to incorporate this brown craft paper. Since I'm not using white paper, I'm going to use a clear product to pull the print. So as soon as this dries, I'm going to use a matte medium to pull the print. Okay, so now we should be good to put the matte medium on top with the six inch sprayer. And I've got matte gel medium. I've also got matte fluid medium. Um, let's hope the gel works. Um, it might provide us with a bit more of a tacky surface, uh, but if you've got liquid gel medium, that'll probably work as well. Um, I want to very gently put this over the top. Ah, it's smudging the colors. Well, that's what happens when you don't wait long enough for it to dry. But let's see what it does anyway. A nice thin layer. And ah, it's not too bad. So... I could have waited longer for it to dry. It's come up in a few places, but you know what? It's the beauty of imperfection. So I'm going to take the 9 by 12 cardstock, line it right up, and press. And then the key to this is to wait because the matte medium has to um, moisturize the pens so that they release from the plate. And they have to dry the whole mixture needs to dry a bit on the back of this cardstock in order for it to pull off of the plate. So we're going to leave it there for a few minutes and we're going to see what happens. And in the meantime, we're going to make sure that the lids are tight on these pens. And I really can't say uh, enough how much I enjoyed working with those chisel points um, in addition to the points that I already had in my stash. So make sure you're your caps are tight before you put them away. Any of the ones that you use that you might've gotten the tips dirty, make sure you rub them off on a clean piece of paper. And um, yeah, that's how you take care of your tools. Okay, so patience is not one of my best uh, qualities, but I've given it a good, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes. So some of it, 
is obviously still going to stay down on the plate, but a lot of it is pulling up and look at how beautiful this is. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I am loving it on this brown craft. So here is the finished product. I really like it. I don't even mind the way that that stuff got a little messed up because I went over it with a matte medium while it was a little too damp. It's been humid here lately. It's been raining a lot. So in, in, in the summer, it would have dried a lot quicker. But look at that. That looks great. Now, you can come back in and embellish with the Posca pens on top if you want. I really kind of like the striated wood block kind of look of it. I like how the brown is showing through sort of in this area. I like how the... Um, how the uh, colors are, uh, that ghost print of the dark purple is showing in heavier in some areas than not. Shows really well there and here and there. Again, you can mess with how heavy or how light you put, uh, you apply the ghost print um, with the paint. Uh, but I'm really, really happy with how that looks. I love that it's on this card stock. Nothing stuck to the plate. Um, we can get, we could pull a few more um, prints to get the rest of this off. Uh, but none of them are going to be as beautiful as that. So... Okay, so I did a second one. And I would love to tell you that I was more patient this time, but it's not true. What I did was I hit it with the hairdryer. <laughs> So let's see what happens with this one. And this one I want to pull on the black cardstock, I think. I mean, I could do it again on the brown cardstock, but I think that I want to pull it on the black cardstock. I kept a lot of light colors on it, but I also printed my ghost print in purple, which I think is going to get absorbed by the black. So I think the lines are going to appear black or at least pretty dark. So... I'm going to use the fluid matte medium. I'm going to use the fluid because I think it still is going to be less likely to disrupt the um, paint. But I think you could, at this point with it totally dry, I think you could totally use the gel or the fluid. And we're going to get a nice thin layer, but a good coat everywhere. But we don't want it to be too thick, so I'm going to make sure it's a thin coat but it's over all the edges and you can see now that i dried it with a hair dryer it's not moving like the previous one when i wasn't being very patient but we still have to exercise patience because this print is going to have to sit on there and wait for a while before it gets pulled so it's going to need to dry onto the cardstock so we'll wait and see what that looks like Okay, so I have been patient. This has been sitting on here for about 10 minutes, okay? So it should be dried enough to pull the print. And, oh, we're getting better results on this one than the last one, maybe. The patience pays off. Ooh, look at that. And this is why you want to use this cardstock, because it's not going to stick to the plate. After you do all this work, the last thing you want is for the paper to stick to the surface of the plate. So this smooth and sturdy cardstock, look at that. So I made a bunch of little doodly doodles out here and, um, and this came out really nice. Look at that. So that is on the black and I printed it with the dark purple, which doesn't show up, but I kind of wanted it. It shows up a little bit here and there, but then it also shows up as black here and there. And then here's our first one on the brown craft. So we've got two beautiful versions of the One Calla Lily as a Posca paint marker print on the gel plate. And I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you'll give it a try. And um, yeah, that was a lot of fun even with the mishaps. You know, the thing is, is that you have to be willing to make mistakes and try different things and play and see what happens, you know? I mean, I don't even mind that this one got a little messed up. I think it all adds to the beauty of the imperfection of it. And this has a plain background and the doodly background was fun too. Well, thanks for being here. Thanks for playing with Posca paint pens with me. Thanks for all your support. <laughs> 
last year, this year, next year. Please subscribe if you enjoyed the content today. And um, I'll see you back here next week. Happy Friday.